This is the fifth episode of uh, this beautiful series that we do, which is called Matter of Facts. In case you guys haven't seen the other episodes, we have a playlist called Matter of Facts. There are four episodes that are out. The first episode was on cricket with Anirban Das Gupta. Second one was with books with Vishal Dayama. The third one was about Indian comic superheroes. So Nagra, Subramanian Dhruv and all that with Nihal Parashar. And then we did a World War uh, episode, World War One and Two with uh, Ashish Shakya. And this is the fifth one. So go and check it out. The format is very simple. We bring five facts each and we just share those facts with you guys and with each other. Uh, so yeah, that's the idea. So today's episode is somebody who is, uh, uh, who is, I think, without doubt, the most uh, loved quizzing contestant and also a bunch of other things that we do together on this channel. Uh, very happy to have him finally on Matter of Facts. Uh, bring it uh, in, Rohan Joshi. Hello! Hello, Rohan. KV! Rohan, always, always a delight. Al always a delight. In always person, a delight. On Zoom, on stream. Always, just on always. TV. Always, every, always. every single time, always a delight. Yes. I am very excited yes. uh, to be here and talking. Or do you want to do the introduction of the talk? Yes, Rohan. Uh, so essentially, I know we had uh, a lot of challenge to pick one topic because I know both are, you and I are interested in so many topics. Thankfully, we're lucky to be those people. Uh, yes. But you picked a movie that I think you answered as your favorite movie on Random Musings. I yes. think. And yes. without doubt, yes. it's, it, it's, it's not just your favorite movie, but it's a movie, it's a genre-defining movie, it's a generation-defining movie. And for people like us, the first movie came out in 1999, which was... 25 uh, uh, years old this year, KB. That's the other reason I picked it. It's oh, going to be 25 I didn't years old this July. I didn't realize. Oh my and, God. Yeah. <laughs> 25 years, years of greatness. Yes. Oh my, it's been 25 mm -hmm. years of picking... Yeah. Movies. Red pill and yeah. the blue pill. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Rohan, you start. Tell me just generally. I know you've already shared on random musings about your the moment matrix came out and how you felt and uh, that yeah. time 99. But like still, do you think 25 years later do you still feel goosebumps or do you every oh, single no. time? Right? Every single time. Like there's if it it's one of those things where if you know, like now TV like channel switching doesn't happen, but if you're ever in a hotel somewhere. Mm. You're switching channels, the matrix is on, yeah. gotta watch it till the end. Yeah. Okay, like yeah. all plans cancelled, gotta watch yeah. it to the end. Yeah. It's yeah. still, I think, um, like you said, right? Chandra defining, like so many things defining, yeah. uh, to the point where even today, like we will talk about this in the fact that even today we are finding hidden meanings and layers mm. to mm. like its story, mm. uh, and timeliness. And I think it's still like defined some of the biggest tropes in like cyberpunk, mm. in so mm. many things, mm. uh. For us are you yeah. or do you have the same feeling for the second and third movie or are you like no no not as much like i think as yeah. time has sort of passed i think like i'm little more aware of the second and third movie's flaws mm -hmm. uh and i think like overall as a trilogy it's a little hit and miss. Mm -hmm. uh the fourth film starts off really well and then sort mm -hmm. of blows its promise yeah. so let's just not pretend like yeah. it's not there but uh i think in general also it the, the, that second and third film were kind of tacked on uh, the first film is truly the film of ideas. Yes. Uh, everything else is just sort of a retread on those ideas or then mm. trying to further develop them in ways that don't necessarily work out. Mm. Uh, but I think the first film is like the true sort of yeah. Yeah. film of ideas for me. Yeah. And yeah. and again, just like now at age 40, if I'd seen it for the first time, I don't know. Mm. But 1999, yeah. I was like 16 years old and my circuits were fried. Like completely fried, right? Because yeah. again, we're wowed so easily today, right? Internet yeah. itna sara hota hai. Yeah. Tab to kuch yeah. nahi tha na? Yeah. yeah. So, matlab aise pehle baar bullet time dekha to jo yeah. bad gayi, <laughs> right? Yeah. And this yeah. bullet time, remember, is coming like almost ninety five minutes into the movie yeah. where they've already been dropping philosophy and spirituality and what is reality and all yeah. of those things at you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the gift that never stops giving. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So let's begin our episode, uh, Rohan. The format yes. is simple. We'll share one fact each. After every one round of fact, I will go to the audience and see if they have said something. We'll respond right. to that. And for the people who are watching it later, this, when done live, was a members-only stream. And um, yeah, so our members have joined us live. I'll start. My facts are very basic. This is a disclaimer Please. for everyone. Okay. I have come up with uh, some of the most uh, well-known Matrix fact, but I'm sure... They, are, they always amaze me anytime I see. So I'm starting with my favorite fact, which is essentially just the casting of... Uh, I was about to say just the casting of John Wick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean... Yeah. 
ஜானி <laughs> 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 Yes uh, the star of 90s and known for doing slightly different kind of cinema so yes. it was uh, it was Johnny Depp first and then they apparently also went to Brad Pitt they went to Van Val Kilmer and they went to Will Smith most famous yes. uh, Will Smith apparently yes. chose Wild Wild West over yes, the exactly. Matrix yes exactly he chose Wild Wild West over the Matrix and then yes. Jada did the sequel yes <laughs> <laughs> So that's my first fact, Rohan. Uh, key about the bunch of actors who were approached, and mm-hmm. as it happens with most iconic characters, you can never, never again visualize the character. But no, what do you never, think never. of the casting? I I just want your opinion on Keanu Reeves <sighs> and the alternate options that we had. Man, like so again, the alternate <laughs> options again. Who can tell, right? But like when I yeah. think about it, like you think about everybody's most iconic performance. Right? You go to mm-hmm. Johnny Depp, you see Jack Sparrow. you go to will smith and you think of like men in black and you think of all of those things and oscars plus oscars oscars you know great performance you, you know can't great, visualize anybody can't, else can't visualize anybody <laughs> else at all right <laughs> but the thing is that with all those other names that you took it whether it's will smith whether it's johnny depp whether it's all of that i think one of the things that all of them sort of do that keanu does differently is i think they're sort of bigger emotion actors if that makes mm. any sense right yeah, no, like no. will smith is very this yeah. thing and you know johnny depp is very sort yeah. of like yeah. i think the reason sort of kyanu works so perfectly is because if you remember it came out in 1999 yeah. the sort of central narrative around kyanu reeves what this is remember speed and all it just happened right yeah correct so the central like narrative around him is that this guy is basically like a wooden pretty boy correct okay? like that's the whole thing and somehow what's amazing about this movie is it manages to take that and turn it into such an asset right as this desensitized Correct. sort of like man who feels like he's living a lie yes that in a way it was his sort of it's almost like the opposite of all the fast paced shit that's going on in the movie is this guy yeah. who half the time is just and it works because he's confused yeah. he's yeah. woken up in a new world yeah. and it just so yeah i mean i feel like it would have been interesting to see uh will smith's neo yeah but uh, i don't know johnny depp's neo not quite like yeah. working yeah. like it's not sitting in my head yeah. um and Yeah but i mean yeah. it's Keanu's part man like in, yeah. in every way shape and form right like yeah. he's neo it's yeah. just it's what a, what a, yeah what a great way to look at it now that you said i realize because the, he's like the blank slate that you yeah. need such character 100% like, he is a complete oh blank slate through the yeah. film yeah, yeah. Right? oh my like, god literally the strongest emotion he shows in that film is whoa <laughs> 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 like that's the strongest uh, emotion that he shows in yeah. that film So I think that is one sort of key difference. Yeah. That and also again, he to his credit, right? A lot of people forget. I'll just supplement your fact with another mini fact, which is that mm. you can tell that Keanu wanted to do the movie a lot because mm. he hid an injury mm. to be able to go through the training because that injury actually would have essentially booted him out of the film. Mm. So he hid literally like a back injury mm. to say that. Don't and he went through like the four months of kung fu training, and it's also led to a lot of other really beautiful stories on set where he made a ton of money. for mm. the movie obviously right where mm. he got front end and back end and all mm. of those things but apparently he like went out of his way at least in the sequels etc and all of that to make sure that some of that money was distributed within the vfx team mm. uh, he found out about one two people on the crew who had like debts or whatever mm. paid them off did things like that and his entire logic was that i have enough money now to last for centuries mm. so wow. if i can do this little this thing here and there so he is neo man Yeah, he is neo. neo. He is neo. absolutely neo. Neo. He's neo. Okay, Rohan, your turn. Yes. Your okay, fact. so I'm going to start with a slightly like weird fact. Okay. okay. Just because you know one of the things. In fact, my fact was coming from you said like the whole film or what is reality? Yeah. What yeah. is real? Yeah. So the fun fact is that the the Matrix has also spawned its own version of uh, legal insanity defenses called the Matrix defense. You can actually go look this up on Wikipedia. Where okay. there have been cases since the movie came out, where lawyers have tried to use essentially this thing called the Matrix defense, hmm. which argues like so there was this person who killed their landlady or something like that, okay. and the lawyer's argument and her argument was that she thought that she was in the Matrix, 
or in a computer game and hence she could not kill the landlady because she would still be alive in another reality ke bas game mein mar ja rahi hai ye so wow. the thing is a lot of sort of mental illness adjacent defenses since the movie you can go, you can go to wikipedia and look up the matrix defense okay there are examples of people who have actually and and you know there the like taxi driver also had there was the taxi driver defense yeah. so this is essentially like a child of the taxi driver defense is the yeah. matrix defense is a thing yeah. that has actually been used in court occasionally successfully uh that's okay. the crazy thing occasionally successfully uh, since the release of that movie so oh, this sort of God. idea is that your honor my client is insane and could not tell the difference between reality and a computer thing and they thought that they were in the matrix and that this act of murder would actually cause them to emerge so the matrix defense oh my thing. god this is crazy <laughs> oh my god yeah. this is legit the plot of crime and punishment yes <laughs> yes yes yes, yes. Literally. imagine imagine Literally. a fusion where yes the matrix, matrix defense, defense. Like, like bhai mujhe to laga main neo <laughs> oh my god what a yes. what a crazy start i will now our first round is done we'll have four such rounds i'll go to the chat and see what people are saying uh, hello also to yash mehta yash mehta says akshay kumar greater 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 than keanu reeves those who know no of course of course of course friends is from an iconic movie called yes, 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 <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> nikun says that was a frame by frame copy of course yes narendran says hello yes. puri and hello will hello rohan yes i hello, hello. from both of us Well, Nikunj has a, a different opinion than us. He said, "Love the second one more than the first one." Really? How interesting. Okay. Interesting, Nikunj. Interesting. Nikunj, please, please also in the yeah. chat, and we'll come back again. Tell us why you love the yes, second. Yes. In that case, I have a special fact for Nikunj, which is that yes. for the highway sequence in the second one, mm. uh, I think it was General Motors mm. who gave them three hundred cars. They mm. built that highway loop essentially. They built it separately so that they could shoot on oh. it. They built essentially like a two mile loop of highway. Huh. and gm gave them something like 2 300 cars saying use them for the stunt sequences if i'm not mistaken when i checked this up every single car was returned wrecked oh wow basically so they used actual gm cars in the stunts to given to them i think gm yes. or can one of them yeah. and yeah. they wrecked like every single one wow yeah <laughs> yeah so that's a special fact <laughs> for enjoyers of the second one <laughs> Okay, Narendra is having been a big fan of the series uh, initially. Ne- could never get around to watch the last one. Please, Nikun, uh, Narendra, go go and watch all the four episodes. Um, somehow can't imagine anyone else apart from Keanu Reeves playing Neo. Of course, Nikun, we discussed that. Um, okay. Uh, Abhishek Chakravarti says interested in knowing your takes on the Ghost in the Shell connection slash inspiration. Yeah, yeah. All the Wachowskis the, uh, have admitted this like very openly yeah. that in the mm-hmm. sense. uh ghost in the shell was a huge influence for them like the whole sort of kusanagi arc and the arc mm-hmm. of you know what is real what is machine mm-hmm. what is human uh, akira was a huge reference you know they mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. said like even like kaneda's jacket had a pill on it if yeah. you go watch like yeah. akira the anime yeah. uh that's yeah. clearly like a huge yeah. reference uh william gibson's neuromancer uh yeah. they op again admit it was a huge inspiration for them it was yeah. like one of the defining cyberpunk novels and they yeah. said that that also was a huge influence. Yeah. but yeah ghost yeah. in the shell I yeah. think even they admit had been a huge yeah. influence yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the Unreal Engine five engineered the Matrix Awakens game, or just yes. the world building there. Oh. Yes, there was a like a twenty minute demo basically mm-hmm. that was there. Mm-hmm. Nikun says the action was crisper in the second one, and the characters got fleshed out more. While the first one was more story driven, um, the second one built the world more. Okay, Fair. I know what Nikun is saying is typical of many trilogies and series. Yeah. Uh, and that's why a lot of people love the two tars more than the fellowship because you know they feel like I mean you know of course no, and again like the two tars also has that moment right where every time aragon clicks that helmet there's yeah. always that one trivia guy who's like you know you know in this scene he actually broke his foot you know yeah, actually, you know you know he broke his foot he's <laughs> got that all important moment yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay now we'll start with the second second one yes. i'll go with another basic one can't beat that matrix defense thing yeah. <laughs> you're thinking about it oh my god uh okay okay uh, my second fact another very basic fact a lot of people know this but i'm still going to say it uh in case in even one person didn't know that the matrix was actually shot in australia yes okay, this is this is uh, this always blows my mind because while watching the movie you can never imagine that this is uh, sydney in australia correct um, that's because uh, uh, the whole interior is everything was in australia for tax purposes yes. and that apparently significantly lowered the film's budget 
However, all the street names are taken from locations in Chicago. And that's where the Wachowskis grew up. Okay. So right. They, they, all the references are Chicago. But the film was, and I had some figures also. Some yeah, basically, it's this it, it, there was this point where Australia, especially in like the late 90s and early 2000s, was a huge, was offering huge tax cuts, hmm. which then later on became like Glasgow, Scotland, etc. Also yeah, started yeah. doing that. Yeah. But yeah, Australia, even before like LOTR, like was yeah. happening in New Zealand, etc. Yeah. A bunch yeah. of stuff was shot in Sydney and a lot of American beaches were recreated at Bondi Beach and things mm. like that. Like mm. it was a huge tax cut hub, like yeah. for Hollywood productions. Yeah. I found the numbers also while Warner Brothers estimated that it would have cost them $95 million to make the film in America. The actual production ended up costing rupees, uh, sorry, not rupees, uh, dollars, $60 million. So from 95 to 60 is almost one third. Can you time. imagine one of the biggest tent poles of the year in 2024 being made for just $60 million? Like, yeah. Can you even imagine? Like 60 million as a budget. 95 yes. to 60. And to give context to the audience, the film went on to make over 463 million dollars at the box office. So 60 to yep. 63. Uh yeah, Rohan. So this was Sydney. Okay. okay. All right. I have another another this is another cute fun fact uh mm -hmm. about the movie. So you know, one of the most iconic sequences <laughs> in the movie is when uh Morpheus takes Neo into the construct for the first time and mm -hmm. Neo sees the woman in red. Mm -hmm. Right. And Morpheus is like, look again. Mm -hmm. And he looks and it's an agent. There's a beautiful detail in that scene. If you go and watch um, mm -hmm. in that scene, it looks like other than the woman in red, the people in the suits, it mm -hmm. looks like the same person is walking by multiple times. Now, this is a little detail that they put mm -hmm. in there. One to show that the cruise construct is a much smaller program than the matrix. So mm -hmm. it can't have infinite face renderings. Correct. That's why it only has limited face. And the beautiful thing is how the Wachowskis shot this. Okay. Mm -hmm. They essentially cast a bunch of twins. Oh my God. They basically pulled out a bunch of twins and triplets. All right. And they oh, put shit. them in suits and they had them walk past the frame at different points. So you would get the illusion that you're seeing the same person again and again. Essentially limited NPC faces was what they were going for. Like to use a game metaphor. And the way they yeah. shot that was just a simple thing of getting twins and triplets and having them walk past at different times. So that if you notice that you'll be like, holy shit, that guy just walked past. How are they walking past? Uh, again. Oh my God. So that was another little detail that they put in there that I thought was really fascinating. That is insane. Oh my <laughs> if you God. go back oh. and watch that sequence, yeah. that's yeah. another little thing. Oh my God. That's there. Oh my God. Even, um, you know, when, when I, I, I was recently watching this beautiful movie called Charlie 777. It's a Canada movie. Beautiful dog. Uh, and human relationship and then we were discussing how in movies they usually cast more than one dog yeah yeah right? yeah. And, and yeah. I'm yeah. Suddenly thinking or that. more than one <laughs> Olsen twin yeah <laughs> or more than one <laughs> it's like man how do you hurt? oh my god oh dude yeah 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 just amazing like when I first found out this fact even I was like wow what a detail like man, just what an obsessive mm -hmm. attention to detail because in today's world you'll just imagine that they'll just take one guy to walk around and they'll do something yeah and they'll figure it out right or through. like some but no here yeah. they were like slow, old school okay cool okay quickly going to the audience like I said one fact each and then I'll go to you guys pull out um, next fact Rohan Savan says the first time I realized Neo was an anagram for the one it blew my 10 year old mind hmm Mm, yep, mm. yep yep oh brother yep, yep. wait till you rewatch the movie and realize that from the start he's in room 303 for trinity uh he's reading the the book in which he hides his chips when the guy comes in his simulacra and simulation mm, mm, mm. and once all those details though yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. also one of the first films that was sort of coming out around the time where message boards were becoming a thing on the internet right Correct. Like social media Correct. so it really sort of fueled this idea of and the dvd generation was there so you know, for the first time you could pause a mm. film for details. You could Correct. pause a film and sort of be like, ah, mm. Easter egg, mm. and then go discuss it with this larger yeah. world yeah. on the internet. And this is one of the yeah. first films that really played into that as well, where we mm. just leave a ton of information in the background yeah. uh, for people to then go discuss with their buddies about what is real, what is fake. So yeah. that was quite cool. That is such a great way. Uh, thank you for bringing this up, Rohan, because that puts things into perspective in terms of timeline of filmmaking, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people, when you watch a movie from 60s and 70s, and you pause and say, yeah, the book mein kya hai. And ah. I think like the filmmaker then won't have you imagined 
No. That somebody can pause this film. You know what I mean? Correct, correct, absolutely. That imagination right? only would not be there. एक बार theater में देखेगा, हो गया। उसके बाद और तब तो मतलब focus तो actor के चेहरे पे होगा। Correct, मतलब right और हो गया, right? TV shows, even TV shows that were made in like the 80s and the 90s, right? They have yeah. impact as a simplicity to that storytelling because it yeah. assumes that yeah. you will watch this scene once and yeah. then there'll be a commercial break and you'll get up. and you yeah. might miss it so there's no like heavy mystery box shit going on yeah yeah because they know that you'll watch each episode once once in a yeah. week uska bhi 5 minute miss ho jayega kahan pe to wo bas simple rakhte nobody thought 30th little it will be on netflix and you'll keep pausing and yeah yeah <laughs> and be like are 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 ye main ye hai okay um okay uh rohan why while, while while we're sorry while we're on okay. that just wanted to add since you said as a timeline of things hmm. right hmm. uh It was also, and instead of making a separate fact, I'll just throw this in here. Uh, mm-hmm. It was also one of the first films at that time to go all in on digital marketing. Mm-hmm. Essentially, it was one of the first films to have mm-hmm. like a website that was not just for keeping wallpapers and photos, but like, mm-hmm. like first of all, remember just the concept of dedicated movie websites, right? Yes. Not a Facebook page, not an Instagram page. Mm-hmm. And I still remember in 1999, what is the Matrix dot com mm-hmm. was what the website was called. and mm-hmm. it was this super popular website cuz you went there and it looked only like a mess of computer screens and it had a lot of the website had easter eggs mm-hmm. like you could find code words and a secret link where you could enter that code word in and you would get a special page which would have some comic frames in it or you could enter like sort of binary code and you get a special thing in it so the yeah. website also actually just sort of encouraged you at that time yeah. to yeah. go and mess with it and really play with this idea of what is yeah. the matrix yeah I that that reminds me how many of us had the Matrix wallpaper on our oh all of us all of all us all of us ever was the Matrix dropping of course the, like, of course all of drop. us all of us hundred percent which <laughs> was apparently inspired by the designer watching rain falling on a window pane yeah yeah basically <laughs> rain sliding down a window pane and he's like that would be a cool effect and the first yeah. words that he pulled was yeah. that was random Japanese from a cookbook <laughs> yeah sushi recipe and all that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> random things like that. <laughs> okay, now we have Rohan who another Rohan. Rohan Savant has requested that we need an LOTR episode. Why not, Rohan? Why okay? not? I am up okay. for it. You say sometime, when? Sometime in the future, guys. On this series, we will have uh, an an LOTR episode as Done. well. Um, need need an LOTR episode. So, Bashmi, you can yes, yes. Listen, listen. Like noted, registered. Um, okay. Uh. my mind blown moment was realizing it was actually um, oh sorry nikunj has said the soundtrack asatoma sadgamay was yeah. our school prayer yes 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 yeah. though that doesn't come until the third movie, uh, my mind was blown hmm, so i don't think that comes until so. the third yeah, movie though the yeah. 19th, that's 19th. in the third movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. sorry please yeah. go on but uh, agar soundtrack pe pahunche hi hai to again should be mentioned that the 1999 <laughs> matrix ost was one of those seminal soundtracks like mm. of all time in the sense that yeah, it it yeah. did this thing where it first of all <laughs> took an extremely niche genre or underground genre of music which is industrial metal and pulled it into mm. the mainstream by putting mm. it in the biggest movie of the year okay here yeah. are names that if you were a music yeah, fan yeah. you probably knew but became mainstream yeah. i've got mm. i've got the page open here because it breaks my brain mm. how like i discovered so many of these bands Because of the mm. Matrix soundtrack, okay. Mm. It's got "Rock mm. Is Dead" by Marilyn Manson, then "Spy Break," mm. which everybody knows by mm. the Propeller Heads, okay. Mm. It's got um, Rob Dugan "Club to Death." It's got mm. "Lunatic Calm." It's got the Prodigy. It's got mm. Rob Zombie. It's got the mm. Deftones. It's got Monster mm. Magnet. It's got, mm. of course, "Do Hast" by Ramstein, mm. which everybody no, knows, yeah. and "Wake Up" by Rage Against the Machine, right? Which was the yeah. closing credit yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. And man, those bands, the popularity yeah. soaring that happened. Yeah, like yeah. after that, I still remember. I had tape. I mean, the whole thing was given to Walk Walkman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that I have a random joke to share, which I, I saw it on a some meme page and shared with Kanan. I remember we were uh, laughing. Uh. It, which was it just said, "Rage Against the Machine never clarified what machine they were talking about, but in all likelihood, it was a printer." <laughs> yes, I have seen that, and I agree. I support this meme one hundred percent. Printer and toaster, most rage-worthy <laughs> machines. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. We'll let's start with the third one now. Uh, I will again go to one of those classic, maybe yes. even one one more casting one for all you know. Um, uh, I had an anime thing, but I think we sort of covered 
uh, ghost in the shell so i'll not not go i also had the spinal injury one but uh, don't okay. cover <laughs> sorry <laughs> um okay one more which i had is the classic okay let me let me just because we need to talk about Wachowski yes. anyways so I'll just start with that uh, is the fact that the uh, Warner Brothers didn't really want Wachowski to direct it uh, because they did not have any directorial yep. experience as such yep. and they thought they were unqualified unqual to direct the Matrix and to prove their mettle the Wachowskis wrote and directed the crime thriller Bound yes. which became a modest hit and that convinced the studio that they knew what they were doing and then they of course Yes, on board to direct, and there was another story which I'll just club with this, where there was some initial jitters about what they are doing, what are they shooting, and then they actually showed the opening scene. Yes, uh, to to the to the yes, uh, to the producer. They said, "Yeh dek, yeh dek, kya ho raha hai? Picture ke pehle five minute mein dek kya ho raha hai?" Because apparently there are legends and rumors that um, Wachowskis had spent the ten million dollar budget on uh, just shooting the opening scene. And so, <laughs> I mean, and then they were like, no, this is just a rumor and all that. But they apparently then they did, they did, they they shot yeah. the Trinity introductory act, action yes. sequence. Yes. They did to Warner Brothers and they were like, yeah, they, yeah, chal raha uh, but yeah, on Wachowski's, uh, Rohan, now that we have yes. talked about it, just wanted yes. your. Yes. What... So on the Wachowski, so many things, right? Like, so first of all, I think just in general, I think the Wachowski's are among the most sort of fascinating filmmakers of our generation. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. In the sense that right from the start, I'm saying all the way from bound, okay, mm. and I will carry this all the way to Speed Racer and beyond is mm. that their singular obsession in mm. terms of as a theme, right, mm. like how Nolan's entire idea is basically obsessed men, right, that's his theme, like men with dangerous obsessions is Nolan's mm. theme, mm. the mm. two of them, their mm. theme right from the start has been mm. people trying to essentially be authentic or find themselves in a world that tells them that they have to be something else. Hmm. This has been the defining theme. Like Bound is also essentially, it's about basically, you know, there's a gangster and his girlfriend and then girlfriend realizes she actually has the hearts for the woman staying. So hmm. it's a sort of closeted lesbian romance. Hmm. Then The Matrix is of course a story about this person who's told he's Thomas Anderson, hmm. uh, but then finds out he's actually Neo. Hmm. In the last few years, uh, a lot of people have also suggested that the film is actually, you know, we always thought it as like, oh, you know, this corporate slave, Mm. allegory etc but a lot including the Wachowski is a sort of suggested that the film is actually a trans allegory yeah right because again extremely important to note that both Wachowskis have since the release of this film transitioned yeah. um, and now present as women mm. so in fact it, it's sort of the argument like so many of the lines in the movie also mm. right mm. like have you ever had a feeling that you know you mm. knew something was wrong yeah. but you can't tell what it is and that feeling yeah. is growing inside of you yeah. then also that sort of very iconic moment right where like where Agent Smith is like, do you hear that, Mr. Anderson? That is the sound of inevitability. Mm. And he goes, My name is Neo. Mm. Right? That's a very categorical rejection of dead name, essentially. Mm. Like and going, no, this is my name and my identity. Mm. And even the character of Switch. Mm. Right? Like, like and, and, and there's a purposeful choice of how when they sort of enter the matrix again, mm. all of them have this very androgynous sort of look. Mm. To mm. them, the character. Mm. So even the character of Switch, for example, there was mm. apparently, and again, I don't know how to verify this or not, but there mm. was a version of the script mm. where in the real world, uh, or mm. rather in, in Zion or whatever, mm. Switch was a man, but in the Matrix mm. was a woman. Mm. Like every mm. time they went into the Matrix would be a woman. Mm. And then that mm. was then changed into this sort of, be this mm. androgynous character. And then mm. when you go back and then watch the movie with fresh eyes, mm. and then you also read about the context of, the sort of Wachowski's lives. You're like, holy mm. crap, mm. that is true. Which then adds on to the other add-on fact, which was going to be mm. a separate fact, but fits here mm. in the trans allegory thing, which is that traditionally mm. in the 90s, uh, it's also interesting because Prozac was a blue pill mm. and estrogen was a red pill. Oh, wow. Estrogen was available as a red mm. pill. Okay, mm. at that time, which sort of solidifies mm. the analogy of mm. you want to just stay asleep Mm. Or do you want to become who you are or who you're mm. sort of meant mm. to be? And I think especially given like sort of, you know, what happened with the Wachowskis and their own lives uh, later on, I think that just such a fascinating mm. recontextualization mm. of the movie, like, you know, and that's the thing that breaks my 25 years old. Mm. And there are still other contexts in which the movie still holds true and solid mm. and for want of a better word, philosophically true. Yeah. Right. Which I think is awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah, before you go to your third fact, yeah, I was uh, 
like the Wachowskis themselves have have said that you know there are trans allegory and metaphor etc in the movie and according to them the world was not ready in 1999 for yeah. a more pointed this yeah, thing absolutely. but one of the most heartening things they have gone through since the matrix came out in the last 25 years is so many people have come out yeah the matrix and because of yeah. it and all the messages that they right. keep just the idea of those. being true to yeah. yourself right that that itself is just uh, and credit to the wachowskis for living their authentic lives right after yes. all of these years yeah yeah which i think is kind of cool yeah okay ron your your third third fact my third yeah. fact okay so my third fact is another fun fact which is that um in the early part of the movie uh mm. neo goes to a uh, snm club mm. where he meets trinity uh mm. fun fact that is a real snm club and the extras were all people wearing their own gear okay that is an actual snm club known by if you're a fan of either the stranger things or the x men the hellfire mm. club it oh. is literally called the hellfire club and wow. it was in fact an actual bdsm club and yeah so a lot of the extras in that scene are actually just wearing their own bondage gear and not a uh, costume so there that is my that is my other fact. oh my god yeah <laughs> Oh. Woo. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh going to the audience. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh Okay. Okay, yes. Uh Keanu and uh, Carrie and Moss's action sequence set to propellers fire break. Yes. Also it could iconic. Be, yeah, iconic. Uh, iconic. 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 Really also, it could just be my POV, but a vertical slash overhead shot of falling rain and the Wachowskis seem to be a thing. Hmm. Yes, true. Could be. Hmm. Abhishek says, you missed my trivia question. Sorry, Abhishek. I'll just scan. Oh. Cooper, what question did you ask, Abhishek? Oh, yes. Quick question to both of you. Connect. Okay, wow. Connect question. Connect the Matrix, Memento and the Sopranos. Hint, it's an actor. Not very well known, but I hope one of you knows. Something the Matrix, about... the Sopranos, and Matrix, Memento, and Soprano. Okay. Matrix, Memento, and Sopranos. Who was in Memento? Oh, was it? One sec. Is it Apna Joe Pantoliano? Like, I feel like that can be the only connection, right? Yeah. Like the guy who played uh, Cypher in the Matrix. Hmm, hmm, who hmm. played, uh, he's in Memento as what's his yeah. name? Uh, the other guy, basically. Yeah. Johnny G. We thinks yeah. is Johnny G, yeah. and I'm pretty sure Joe Pantoliano was also in The Sopranos. He does look like one of. Pretty the... sure he was <laughs> in it. So I'm hoping that is the correct yeah, answer. Yeah. Please, yeah. Abhishek. Please confirm. Please let uh, us know. Please let we, us know. Yeah. When we come back to you, uh, after the fourth one, uh, let us know. Okay. Uh, let me go to my fourth one, Rohan. Yes. Okay. Wait. Um. Okay. Uh, not this one. Not this one. Uh, oh yeah, I had a Hugo viewing thing because that's yes. one person we haven't really focused so far. Oh yes. Okay. Uh, very basic. Hugo uh, weaving didn't have to look too far for inspiration for his character because uh, Agent Smith's voice. He modeled the voice after the Wachowskis themselves. Really? Yes. That's amazing. Yes. That's this, that's this that's guy. that's amazing. Also, what can a we take a take a second to yes. shout out to Hugo Weaving? All yes. Right? yes. Like I think this person has far and away, if you have to total up, like he's up there with Ian McKellen and yeah. uh yeah. this guy Christopher Lee, just in terms of yeah. led iconic characters he's played, right? Yeah. Like yeah. this guy has been Agent Smith, yeah. he has been Douglas Jardine, he yeah. has been Megatron. Yes. He has been Elrond. Yes. He has been what so many things he's been. Yeah, he, v for Vendetta. Yeah, V for Vendetta. He's V, exactly. Wachowski. He's V. Wachowski. V also. Wachowski. I mean, right? like, didn't know Wachowski even... produced and wrote V for Vendetta. Where, yeah, uh, a baller. Like total baller. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why I wanted just, this just so that Hugo Weaving could got a got a shout out to Hugo Weaving. And Red Skull. He was Red Skull also. He was Red Skull. Like he was oh Red my God. Skull also. in the largest scheme of these, you forget <laughs> Red Skull. It, 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 like, uh, like that's Red, Red how Ah. Hugo Weaving is man. Every time in uh, the first Captain America movie, when he enters that random German village, yes, for yes, the, for the interrogation when he's finding the thing, 
uh, he enters you like oh my god agent smith is there yeah, straight up straight up <laughs> yeah, always always just straight up oh, oh my god oh hugo being what a guy okay rohan just two good okay fourth my one. fourth one is um so when they were trying to pitch the movie uh to warner brothers so warner was not fully clicking with the film so these guys said you know what if we try and do a traditional pitch na bouncer jane wala hai so hmm. they actually hired like friends who are professional comic book artists and they actually storyboarded their pitch as like a 600 page comic yeah like a 600 page comic which they then gave to warner and said see hmm. Hmm. now you'll get it and warner saw it and like i'm saying heavy shit right they had guys like jeff darrow and all hmm. draw in these comics these are not like small time comic yeah. artists and warner saw it and said set it. that's the thing no ron like <laughs> i mean both you and i have, are in this field luckily where we go through this pitch process in its various yeah shapes. yeah and you need to really have like such strong belief in what you're pitching oh for long you have to be able to see it you have to be able to see it right you have to be able to see it completely otherwise you can't waffle on it to be able yeah. to before a shot has been done before a rupee has been approved to be able to put together a 600 page essentially storyboard yeah and say here is yeah. matlab to use a typically indian word guts guts ah <laughs> guts <laughs> अभिषेक लुकिंग अप Oh, I did not notice her. In, thank uh, you, Abhishek. Thank you, thank you for bringing this up. Just uh, correct. Avara Pagal Divana, Gajni, and <laughs> and what? Soprano. What they put? I mean, and Soprano. I mean, every has to be James Gandolfini. You know, who gave an all-time great performance in Gangs of Basipur yeah. and Avara Pagal Divana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. My turn. I will. Since you said care. um wait carry any moss i'll i'll go i'll go back to my favorite yes. for for uh, since i started with uh, john <laughs> keanu reeves uh, okay machoski initial casting idea for neo as we discussed already but trinity also was something that they took some time to figure out before uh, the actual trinity was cast and apparently and these are some of the names i'll just throw uh, they went to salma hayek they went to sandra bullock they even went to madonna it seems yeah okay. and apparently and, and rohan uh, talked about her earlier jada pinkett smith did screen test for the part before you know obviously she wasn't cast and then she came mm, back yeah because uh, then, then they realized back. she had no chemistry with will smith so they were like nah we'll <laughs> <laughs> if will smith is neo we can't have her yeah. <laughs> <sighs> but moss till yeah. the matrix came out i mean at least keanu uh, reeves had speed and all but moss was known only for her television roles yeah at, till the point matrix came out and of course made trinity iconic i mean so now dude, from i John... think like just mm. at that age to sort of i think carry and moss in essentially yeah. spray on leather yeah. uh at 16 year old rohan had many feelings yes like many 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 feelings like yeah. i think yeah. i think that was the day i realized i whatever you call an alpha i am not that because i remember watching that movie saying i would let this person dominate the shit out of me <laughs> like 100% no problem like at all but uh, yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. neither yeah, here nor there i i yeah the, the only reason i picked this fact was also because we now spoken about keanu reeves is talking about yes. uh, he was doing so one shout out to her as well and uh, like rohan said we uh, it was very rare to see such characters in in cinema from whatever we were exposed to as teenagers then and it was like yaar ye bahut cool hai yaar like yeah, i know yeah, yeah. later Man- monica belucci entered the cast and a lot of uh, people were like no, no, but trinity is still in matrix when monica belucci aagi but uh, really carian uh, moss was like it was i remember on slam book it <laughs> used to be one of the most popular answers yes of course of it course was, 100% all right 100% like iconic means iconic iconic, iconic. Yeah. like yeah. triple quadruple iconic 
Okay, Rowan Yorton. Is it the fourth one or the fifth one? Fifth one now. Fifth. Oh, this is the last one. Okay. okay. I think so. I think so. I think so. Because... Chat, if you can confirm. Uh, or I'll... We also had so many sub facts and correct. facts on top of facts. Correct, correct. So I, um, you, we can just revise. I think you said you, your, you talked about the Matrix defense. Yes. Then you talked about the comic book pitching thing. Yes. Uh, then um, you... the real uh, uh, this thing club. The S N M club, yes. The twins in the construct the sequence. Twins. Okay, yeah. So this is the last. Yes. One. yes, this is the this is the last one. Okay, so then for the last one, oh no, where to go? I had it saved here. Uh, yeah. Uh, fun fact is that uh, Keanu Reeves did that ledge walk for real. With like. With holding a bulky Nokia phone in his hand, um, he did that for real apparently, like. And as a bonus fact, I will throw on there the fact that since you also talked about the fact that he hid an injury, uh, Hugo Weaving got injured during yeah, filming. Yeah, Carrie yeah. Ann Moss broke her ankle yeah. during filming. So it was brutal. And my and I'm just going to throw one final sort of fact in there, aside from the fact that he did that stunt real time, is yeah. also the very simple fact that um, bullet time, yeah, sort of as a thing. Okay, now this is the one. This thing that everybody sort of says like, "Oh man, the Matrix bullet time." But bullet time had actually been used prior, like effects like bullet time. Like in fact, Michel Gondry had used it mm. in like a video that he directed like multiple mm. years before the Matrix came out. There mm. were music videos that used it. Mm. And first, when the Wachowskis were trying to do bullet time, they weren't mm. nailing it. Mm. It was very difficult for them to figure. In fact, you know, then eventually everybody now knows the story that it became multiple cameras. Mm. Each of mm. them shooting at twelve thousand frames per second. Mm. That were around the thing before mm. that. Mm. I'm not kidding. They actually tried a version, according mm. to what I read online, where before mm. they arrived on this, between them and Bill Pope, they mm. were at one point literally trying to get one camera to go around that fast. <laughs> they essentially tried. I'm not making this up. Yeah. They tried rocket propelled cameras. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> on rigs, they tried rocket propelled cameras, which didn't work. And then after all this iteration, they arrived at the if we shoot many thousand frames a second, multiple cameras, mm. and then stitch it together, we'll get this sort of iconic effect. To give audience a context now that both Rowan and I have been on enough sets to know, to do one trolley thing, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Just if the DOP is sitting here and the, there is a trolley shot, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes forever. The second the, the camera it, comes off a tripod for even two minutes, no? Yeah. You know you're going to spend multiple hours on that the set. Whole day. Forever and ever. Ho gaya, ho gaya, yeah, ho gaya, karo, ye karo, wo karo. And for them to do this, even visualize 25 And then multiple years. times across the film. Use that as essentially the standout effect in your film. Okay, <laughs> for everything. Is oh just uh, crazy. Yeah. Oh my God. Ron, fantastic. I'll go to the chat once more before we uh, end our stream. I know we have many, many facts. People who are watching it in the comment section, feel free to add, yes. uh, uh, add more uh, whatever uh, facts and trivia about Please this. Please do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Nikun says, just a question. Both Agent Smith and Neo were rebelling against the machine. So was Agent Smith also not a hero? Rohan? Well, I feel like no, because their rebellions were very different. Uh, mm. Agent Smith wanted to assimilate the entire machine. Mm. He wasn't rebelling against the break. He first, his entire idea was to assimilate. Mm. A complete mm. sort of assimilation and then mm. departure. Versus Correct. a Neo who wanted to get out and legitimately bring freedom Correct. to everybody else. Like, Correct. yeah, I feel like Smith's thing came from... In fact, it was almost like the difference between sort of aid and ego. Yeah, like in yeah, a way, yeah. right? Like the yeah. two of them very sort of clearly, it felt like that to me, at least. Yeah. And this is the theme that comes in many of these. Like, for example, yeah. if you see like Anakin Skywalker wants to do something, but yeah. Obi has a different. Aid and ego, right? Yeah. Like just aid yeah. and ego, aid and ego, always yeah. just there. Yeah. So that was the thing. Then, I mean, we can, like you said, we can keep going. Uh, I have a lot of mini facts that I can just throw at you, just little things like if you watch every single part of the film has a distinct uh, color tone. Yes, uh, the, the matrix is yeah. not just that it's green, mm. yeah. it's green with blues removed. Huh. If yeah. you check, yeah. there's no blue. Yeah. And there's very yeah. there's next to no yeah. blue in the matrix sequences. Yeah. Yeah. The real world has extra blue. Yeah. And the yeah. sort of greens removed, the only green you see is on the screen. Yeah. With the, this thing code. And the construct has a yellow tinge. Yeah. Like yeah. when they're in the loading program, yeah. that has a separate yellow to yeah. orange yeah. warm tinge. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. 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 Uh, oh, good news for us. Abhishek Chakravarti has clarified that no, no, guys, you two were right, not Sandeer. 
uh it was jo pantoliano kelly was not in the soprano not uh, two of us two of us two of us yes. group effort <laughs> group effort group effort uh, and uh, okay couple of more things abhishek also said that there is no spoon james cameron's choice of title name for his pandora based film franchise one of the film posters sam and zoe modeled on some ra- ram and sita pose from ack comics okay Uh, yeah. Hollywood's never ending obsession with Indian mythology. That's a completely different topic. Completely, Abhishek. yes. There are there are of course many many themes from Indian mythology and yeah. you know, Indian uh, Indian like, mythology, sort of uh, Chinese spirituality. Yeah. Lots of that. Mm, lots of it like, comes in Star Wars. It comes in Avatar and comes in many 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 things. Uh, but yeah, we'll leave some facts for you guys in the audience also to add in the comments. Yes, please let us uh, know also things that yes. we don't know about this movie. Yeah, yeah, we'd yeah, love yeah. to I, learn new things about the Matrix. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like nine facts later, I'm still thinking of the Matrix defense. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, all I wanted, KB. I just I wanted the Matrix defense. That's why I opened with that straight up. But I'm like, you know I mean, what? Yeah, After yeah, this, yeah. everything has to smoke and mirrors. People will just be thinking about this. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, yeah. Wait, in fact, let me see if I can just very quickly before yeah. we go dig up yeah. ex- some of the examples that were mentioned yes. there because they're yeah. wild. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, so Tonda Lynn Ansley of Hamilton, Ohio, was found not guilty by reason of insanity using this defense after shooting her landlady in the head. Uh, Vadlam Misiege of San Francisco offered a matrix explanation to police after chopping up his landlady and was declared mentally incompetent to stand trial. Um, this is actually like one of the most like gut wrenching ones. Lee Malvo was a guy who participated in the sniper shootings of thirty people in two thousand and two. uh and when he was in his jail cell basically he literally shouted free yourself from the matrix from his cell and he told f and this is just one of those things where it's like this is what happens when idiots take a movie and run with it too far he was that guy literally that guy you can imagine him who told the fbi agents if you want to understand me watch matrix <laughs> like what a 16 year old <laughs> thing to say <laughs> <laughs> but yeah these are these are all sort of examples of the matrix defense like uh, yeah yeah it will be crazy if 20 years later they they are validated because all these yeah, no? <laughs> they are like i told you i yeah i told you there is the matrix it's crazy tell <laughs> me hilarious <laughs> okay wo hai zinda wahan pe wo hai wo look okay on this on this crazy uh, no thank you rohan thank you so much uh as always pleasure pleasure hosting you and and, and always remember guys follow the white rabbit yes yes always <laughs> okay ending stream now and and and